everybody, it's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. And um, I just wanted to tell you that I've been sent an instrument that I've never played, and uh, which is kind of exciting. I never played the bass, and I started playing the bass now because I was sent a bass. So I do enjoy uh, learning all new instruments. Um, I, I accept many challenges. I mean, there are some that I, I've never thought about playing ever in my life. Um, but there are some that I've actually wondered about, and the one that I was sent by Van Gogh is one of those. So I have to tell you a funny story, though. Um, so I've been married 32 plus years to my uh, high school sweetheart, and he always said to me, the one instrument that you are not allowed to play, or I will divorce you, of course he was kidding, um, is the banjo. And uh, you cannot buy a banjo, he said. So you want to laugh? I didn't buy a banjo, but I was sent a banjo. And on a technicality, I have brought a banjo into the house. So hopefully he won't make good on his threats or promises. <laughs> and um, I, the first day when I got it, which was just last week, um, I've been trying to make it get tuned up because uh, the strings have to stretch. But I haven't really been able to play it too much. Um, but I was just tuning it and he was already giving me dagger eyes. So <laughs> this will be an interesting journey, but one I am willing to take and to risk because you know what? There's some pretty sounds you can get out of a banjo. So I'm going to try to draw those out if I can. I bought a book, um, not, you know, selling anything, but I'm just trying to show you what is helping me. And I belong to a few forums, uh, groups on Facebook. And you know, you ask questions and a bunch of people recommended this book. So I did begin to start to, you know, learn from it. And you know what? I try to do everything in one session because I just want to eat it all up, but you can't. You really have to just every couple of days, uh, you know, if you can play every day, great. Just take a little bit, listen to the um, included downloads and that will really help with the roles and things that I'm learning because there's definitely some techniques that uh, are totally different than playing any other stringed instrument that I normally play, which would be guitar, uh, ukulele, a little bit of the bass, and a little bit of lyre harp, and this is a regular harp. This is very different. So without further ado, let me share with you what Van Gogh has sent me and uh, then I'll strum it a little or pick it a little, but then I uh, will try to actually play, you know, a little bit from the book or from something that I've come up with just to share the sound and what I'm doing with it. So again, I'm just prefacing with this that I'm not a banjo player, so. But I do love music and I do love challenges. Okay, so the one thing I must say about the Van Gogh uh, gig bags, they're not my favorite because they're really super thin. And listen, I, I tell all the companies that send me stuff, I'm not going to lie about anything. So I'm telling you right, right up front, this is a really thin bag. Um, they sent me a beautiful 12 string guitar, which I still have. And I had to buy another case for it because I just was worried because it's a really nice instrument. And if this falls, it's going to take the hit because it's very thin. So I would say that it's probably is still a good deal because um, I'm sure these instruments are pricey, uh, other brands and such. So I think you get a lot for the money. But if you buy this, I would suggest um, getting a different case for it, one that's more padded. So it does have um, a zipper with some goodies in it. I will get to that after I show you the banjo itself. And what's very cool about this banjo is that it's closed back. It's beautiful wood. Um, I actually have to look up and I'll put on the screen what kind it is. I would say, I think it's mahogany, but I will, um, I will get the answer and I'll flash it across the screen so you can see. But it's very well made, very shiny. I love shiny things. Very shiny and smooth. No rough edges is like purfling or binding here like on a guitar. And it's smooth as silk. You have to trust me on that because um, you can't feel it. You don't have that kind of TV yet. <laughs> and um, smell-o-vision, wasn't that something they used to talk about? Anyway, 
it's got wow how many frets a lot of frets it's a lot it's got a longer fretboard than a guitar that's the first thing i noticed because the guitar you see here's the 12th fret here so there's 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 20 well there's 23 frets and maybe some full-size guitars have that but i've been playing ukulele so for me this seems ginormous okay um, and if you notice something, if you're not a banjo player, the one thing that you will say is, what is that? So there is this really weird short string here, okay? And it's the one that's re-entrant, which is the high one. It's the high string. Normally, like a guitar goes low bass strings to the treble, so low to high, even though you're going from here, from here to here is low to high. It's actually in pitch um it it goes in sequence but on the banjo just like the ukulele which has re-entrant if you have one with a re-entrant string it's a high note so in this case this banjo is tuned to g so this is the high g and then it goes to d and then g again and then b and then d again so you actually have two D's and two G's, uh, and that makes it an open G chord. So if you just didn't know anything about music, you're actually making a chord if you strum. Doesn't that sound kind of cool? I want to play dueling banjos. Anyway, um, so there's that. It's very pretty. I'm going to come up closer so you can see everything up front. It's got a truss rod, which means you can adjust the neck if you had to. Uh, I think the action's okay. It was a little high, but I had the um, bridge backwards, I believe. Oh, so let me tell you about that. When you get the banjo, it's going to be flat. The string's gonna be flat across this Remo drum head. This is an actual drum head made by Remo, which is a good company. It's like the standard, um, the gold standard. So this bridge is gonna be flat, just laying here. And what you need to do is you need to loosen all the strings and you need to lift it up into the proper holes and you have to basically set the bridge, which means that you want to have the intonation correct because if you don't, if you don't set the bridge, then what will happen is your, your strings will be sharp when you go up along the fretboard. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you set the bridge by measuring. There are a lot of YouTube videos and that's how I learned. And basically you have to measure the length of the um, this neck all the way here and then you go to the 12th fret and then you go halfway from that length so I think it was 26 so I had to go 13 okay and then it's give or take because when I did it exactly 13 inches it kept going sharp at the 12th fret so I had to keep adjusting it a little bit so it could be a little bit of a nuisance when you first get it, um, but once you have it set, you shouldn't really need to deal with that again until you change the strings. So and I'll tell you about what they give you, and they do give you an extra set of strings, so just a little tidbit. So what else? They're steel strings, okay? So it's not like a ukulele. These are not nylon strings. They're all steel strings. And the only one that's wound is the second string down after this high string but when you're over here there's only four strings up to the um, fifth fret so it's kind of funky because my brain keeps wanting to change over here because i'm thinking that this is the second string when i look down but it's the first string so you have to really be careful and um, try to remember that when you're learning not to get too confused okay uh, let me come up close so you can see more about what this looks like because then you'll see it's acoustic electric. So there is a place to plug in to an amp or a recording device, so or a computer, so it's kind of cool. So let me come up to here and you could see up close how pretty it is. Okay, so it's got the Remo drum head right here and it's it sounds like a drum. And you have these, these brackets here can actually be adjusted. So you can do, oh, my husband just came home, so I apologize for the sound of the door, the doorbell. Um, 
so you you have you have brackets here okay and these brackets can be adjusted to tighten or loosen the head and it depends on what kind of sound you want and it will affect the sound of how you play it's a little out of tune again because they're new strings so i apologize but just to show you for demonstration purposes tightening these brackets makes a difference in the sound I don't know anything about banjo, so I would not do this myself. I would probably bring it to a luthier or, you know, a guitar per person place where they can fix banjos or help you uh, set the banjo up. So that might not be a bad idea, especially given the fact, the price point, it might be worth taking this banjo and going to someone you know that could set it up. Because I'm sure if they did, it would sound even better. That's my opinion. Um, I think it's very well made. So I'm going by just the fact that I have got, been given instruments before and, you know, can tell when there's rough fret edges here, um, when the workmanship is shoddy. I mean, you can tell this is made with care. Okay, you have a volume knob only. So this leads me to believe that it's a passive pickup, which means that you will need to get more volume and oomph from either a preamp or from your recording device. But banjos are loud, so you might not be, it might not be so bad. <laughs> so there you go. You could actually take the back off and then it would only be this and you can make it an open back banjo. Um, when you take the back off, some people have actually stuffed the banjo with some kind of like pillow or newspaper or, or material so that it pads the sound and also changes the sound of the drum. My son is a drummer and in, in the drum set, he would put um, a pillow in the bass drum if it was too boomy, depending on your uh, you know recording environment or your playing environment. Okay, so there it says Remo Weather King banjo head only. So these are the things you unscrew. I, again, I would not do it myself. You've got open geared um, tuners right here. Okay, I like these pearloid um, tuning pegs. I think they're really attractive. And I think Van Gogh has a real eye for um, making affordable instruments that are actually pretty to look at and, and made nicely too. So I think this is catchy and it's not like, you know, not gaudy looking. I think they did a nice job. What do you think? It's got markers on the first the third, the fifth, the seventh, the 10th, the 12th, and the 15th, and the 17th fret. Okay, so you got a lot of fret markers. This is not a fret marker. This is what holds that little um, string in place. There's a name for it too in Banjo Land, but I don't know. I also have another book coming, so I'm excited about that. And uh, we tunes in them and how to play. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what it comes with. Okay. So did you see this? I want to make sure that you could see it. I might have been talking into the moon. I hope I was talking right. Otherwise, I'll fix it. That's a little, um, is it the F clef, right? F clef? Yeah, it's not a G clef, it's an F clef. It's the uh, bass clef, <laughs> not the treble clef. You see my doggie over there? She's going to be 19 at the end of May. Is that crazy? I'm so blessed. Uh, let me show you first, because I'm going to put the banjo down for a second. You get a strap. It's a nice material strap with a little, like, I don't know if it's real suede, a suede-like material. And you can hook it up to this little, this little uh, thing here. And then there's on the button here, you can use, okay? All right, let me show you what else you get with the, uh, the banjo from Van Gogh. All right, so you get a nice goodie bag full of stuff. It's actually a couple of things. All right. Okay. You get a cord, which is great, should you want to plug this in. 
right now. I'm not going to plug it in because it's probably really loud, but it's really great to be able to do that if you want to record in a noisy environment, you won't have to worry because it's going to be the straight sound. So I do like that option specifically for recording. So, And of course, if you were gigging somewhere and you had to be heard over a large crowd of your banjo followers, it's good to be plugged in. You get a nice little manual, which is the thickest one I've gotten from like Van Gogh or, or any really company, I guess. Once I got a nice songbook with the uh, tongue drum I got. But this is a nice little manual. Banjo user guide. Basics of Van Gogh banjos. Set up banjo bridge buzzes and troubleshooting. And also, by the way, on their website, they have a whole bunch of like songs and stuff, I notice. I don't know if they're in here. I don't think so. So that's kind of cool. So you can go to their website and you can get additional information on playing the banjo. So I'm not gonna go through the whole book, but as you can see, well, some of it's in different, um, in different languages, but there is still quite a few chapters is about Van Gogh banjos, the banjo components, quick bridge setup for beginners, that's what I was talking about before, adjustments, troubleshooting buzzes, ban adjust banjo truss rod. So if you were ambitious, you could do all of what I was explaining before, tuning, remove banjo resonator, attaching the strap, and maintenance. So there's a lot before you get to the other languages. So that's very cool. Okay, that was what the strap was in, and it comes with three picks. Okay. It comes with an extra set of strings. That's great because you may pop them in tuning. It comes with a tuner, which is great, and the battery, so you get started right away. And it comes with, it's interesting, oh, a truss, this is a truss rod wrench, like an Allen wrench or something, okay? And this is what you need to, to take off or adjust, I believe, those, oh yeah, there's two things, how cool is that? They give you a little tool. This has got a Phillips head in the front, which is to take off, I guess, whatever screws, and this is to adjust it, you see? Very cool, again. As you can see, it's like I'm lifting up the hood of a car. <laughs> Being totally honest. But I will learn. But I wanted to get the video out right away because I, you know, maybe you can see the beginning of my journey and you won't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Let me strum it a little. I'm learning chords. I'll play a few of the chords that I've learned. And you could hear and you could tell me what you think. You have to use a strap because it's super uncomfortable not to. That's why you see banjo players like this because it's slidey and it's round. So it doesn't like, it's kind of, and it's also like um, kind of heavy here, see? So it kind of falls. So. So if you want to know about tuning, just clip on that tuner and you always want to tune up. If you overshoot it, which I got it perfectly ironically, woo, that means it's starting to get in tune. And I mean, it's starting, the strings are starting to stretch. But if you go over it, then go back under and come back up. That's just one of the rules of thumb of tuning to keep it in tight tuning and it doesn't go out of pitch as quickly, okay? So there you go. That's the G. The D is out of tune. Now I went over. So now I gotta go under. again if it does sound a little like pitchy here it's probably because this needs to be adjusted and I'm working on that as I said I think 
once you get it settled and the strings have stretched and you have the bridge where you can get it intonated correctly, I don't think it's too much of a problem because that would really be a pain each time if you had to like kind of start fiddling with the bridge in order to play a song in tune. So that's my only concern, but I think it's because it's new and new strings and this might need to be moved again. So I like the way it sounds. There's a your thumb does the first string, the highest string, your thumb, your thumb does the second, which is the lowest string, and your thumb does the third one, and then your pointer does the second one, and your middle finger does the first one. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's kind of easy with the thumb. It just uses the, you know, over there, and you just have to remember your first two fingers here. And you could do these like rolls and stuff. Okay, so there's a lot I have to learn. I'm enjoying the journey and um, I think it could be fun to learn. All right, let me see if I can find something on here. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> Here we go. Again, this is the beginning of my journey. Um, there's also some picking stuff that I've started to learn. Because the strumming is just one aspect. I think the real banjo sound comes when you get those rolls. Okay, um, let's see if I can find the one. Yeah, this is gonna take some concentration, so let's see if I can do it. Ah, I should have had my sheet music stand. Let me go get it, I'm gonna pause it and go get it. All right, I retuned it again, because as I said, since this, the strings are brand new, I only got this, you know, was it, gosh, I don't even remember, because I had a migraine um, right after it came. I think I got it last Saturday or Monday, or this, oh, Monday, it came Monday, but I had gone for a shingle shot, second one, and I had a migraine for like four days. So anyway, um, I tuned it again, and this is like a little roll that I'm learning. The basic forward roll is called. So it goes like this. I think. <laughs> So it says a lot on the open strings, because again, it's an open tuning, but I'm supposed to sing now. So let's see if I can do it with singing. This little light of mine. Just to show you, this is live TV, baby. <laughs> this is real life. You don't, you're not born knowing how to play something. At least I wasn't. So if you have the drive and the determination and you're willing to laugh at yourself and make mistakes, it's a fun journey. And um, I don't know if it's a fun journey for everybody that's on it who lives with you, but you know what? This is a crazy world. Life is short and music brings so much joy. So hopefully, they will understand whoever's in your life, just like my husband, and although he isn't home, and that's why I'm doing this. No, but I think as I get better at it, it won't be so annoying to him. And I think even 
he's realized this isn't annoying and this is just learning, right? It's, I'm not like bashing on the banjo. I'm just taking it easy. And I think it could be really pretty. Um, I've already just had fun. This is not how do you play the banjo. This is just me improvising. And I was just going, well, this is kind of cool. You know, you can go. stuff just not being afraid to make mistakes and maybe have a couple of wrong notes because you might hit something that sounds really pretty you know it's a tuning I don't even understand because I'm from the guitar ukulele world so you know my fingers might want to make shapes that won't sound good here or maybe there'll be a shape and it still sounds good you know okay this is the shape that I've used on the guitar and I think it sounded cool. So you don't be afraid to experiment. And move it around. See if it sounds good somewhere else, you know? Drones are cool. The open strings don't change. See? So I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having fun. I might come up with a song. I might plug it in, and maybe you could plug it in and do put it in a delay pedal. Oh, I'm going to try that. Put it in my delay pedal, see how cool it sounds. I've done that with the 12 string, and it's amazing. So you can actually have a lot of fun even on the journey of learning how to play it the right way. And you may never play it the right way. And you know what? That's not wrong. I've actually found that out because yeah, is it wrong to play the banjo just experimenting and not ever learning how to do roles if you want to be in a banjo band or play with other players? Yeah, you need to learn the right way. But if you literally are playing for your own enjoyment and you really don't do well with the books, then just have fun with it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do the books because I do want to try to learn, but I'm also not going to have an instrument sit there that maybe I can make music from, but maybe it's not in the conventional way that anybody else thought of. So I kind of feel that way about most instruments. Just have fun with it. It's taken me 57 years to get to that point. So if you're younger than that, get to that point younger and you'll have a really enjoyable, fulfilling, musical life. So let me get off my soapbox. I hope you like the pictures and the video and uh, I just got a Roku so I've been having fun with the different free stuff. So thank you Van Gogh. Um, enjoy your banjo playing. Enjoy your musical journey. God bless. And subscribe to my channel if you can. I'd love for you to stick around.